from the time of her diagnosis, it took our mother about a year and a half to die. From my home in West Virginia, it was a 10 hour drive to the house in New Jersey, but I visited as often as I could. With each trip, there was less of her to see. Near the end, nothing gave her pleasure. Food turned metallic in her mouth. Six months after the funeral, I drove six hours to Carlisle, Pennsylvania to meet my brothers and nephews for our annual fishing trip. It rained on and off as I crossed the West Virginia mountains, and I fished the Yellow Breaches Creek in gray light for a couple of hours before heading for the campground. My brothers would be driving in from New Jersey, and I didn't expect them until dark. I set up my small tent and a rain fly in a light drizzle, built a fire, and sat in a camp chair to await their arrival. By the time they got there, Chris and his two boys, Tyler and Patrick, in one car, and Jeff and his son Kyle in another, the rain was pouring down. It was the first time we'd all been together since the funeral, but we didn't talk about that yet. Back when we'd planned the trip, Chris had volunteered to make dinner the first night, so the rest of us went to work putting up the other tents while he set up shop on the picnic table under the rain fly, assembling the Coleman stove and firing up the lantern. Have you seen Dad lately? I asked. How's he doing? He's all right, lonely, Jeff said, as he put the tent poles together. Yeah. Gradually, the tents carved out their bits of dry air from the wet. Under the rain fly, steam was rising from the pots on the stove. So what's for dinner, Chris? It's a surprise, Chris said. That was fine. We are not a family that believes camping is an excuse for primitive food. Even when we have steaks with potato salad, the potato salad is homemade, according to our mother's recipe. And if you want to see a superior sneer, just put a plastic container of store-bought macaroni salad in front of one of us. Traditional camping trip meals for us are chicken a la king, made from scratch with fresh mushrooms and freshly grilled chicken in the cream sauce. Homemade chili over rice, spaghetti with sausage and meatballs, even the sandwiches we eat for lunch are garnished with sun-dried tomatoes. At last, it was time. Chris opened the smaller of the pots and ladled rice into plastic bowls. Then he took the lid off the larger pot. The aroma hit me like a summer wind, cutting through the damp and the seething rain with the warmth of being kissed goodnight by your mother. Is that what I think it is, Jeff said? What, Kyle said. Lamb curry, I said. Mom used to make it. I haven't had it in probably 10 years. Where'd you find the recipe? It's mom's recipe, Chris said. Found it in one of her old cookbooks. Did you bring chutney, I asked. What do you think, Chris said. It wouldn't be complete without the chutney. The rain poured down around us. The next day, we would fish between showers and come back later to find our campsite so thoroughly drenched that we would break camp and leave the day early. But right then, we sat, and Chris filled our plates. No one had said a word about our mother. We would talk later, after we savored the rich flavors of a dish she made when we were boys. The sweet, spicy tang of the mango chutney, the tender lamb, sharp with curry, the bright green peas, the bits of apple, the sauce turning the perfect rice yellow under the light of the lantern.